Alright, so these are the AirPods Pro Gen 1s and these are the Gen 2s. And today we're gonna... Wait a second. No, 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 that can't be right. These are the Gen 1 AirPods Pros and these are the Gen 2s. Right? Ah, damn it, I was right the first time. Let's get on with it. Hey what's good, Prash here with the first and second gen AirPods Pro and today we're going to pit these two against each other and to actually see whether there's a gap between the Gen 1s and the 2s to justify the Gen 2s as a worthy upgrade over the Gen 1s which by the way are still actually a great set of headphones today. So to start us off I want to go straight into the design and yes there is a difference despite me fumbling the intro. So let's get on with it. All right, so design-wise, believe it or not, there are a few giveaways that you'd be rocking the twos over the ones, and the most noticeable one is this really nice looking set of really well integrated metal lanyard holes. I gotta admit, it's built really well and flush to the case. And overall, I gotta say, it's a nice set of holes if I've ever seen any. Anyway, it allows you to attach a lanyard of your choosing, which is a nice feature to have, especially if you're looking to attach a wrist loop or even a neck loop to it just to make carrying it around that much easier. Or even a smaller loop just to attach it to your backpack and then have it disappear after a while. You know, you do you. In addition to the lanyard holes, you also get a basic speaker which ultimately serves the purpose of allowing you to find your headphones if they're in the case and you've misplaced them by emitting a sound through the Find My app on an iPhone, iPad or MacBook. When you pop the hood, the difference becomes a little more noticeable and while the stem design and silicone tips have carried over from the previous gen, the second gen is rocking some better sound hardware and drivers as seen from the slight physical differences between the headphones. Now on the inside, the second gen also gets a bump in spec with the upgraded H2 chip as opposed to the H1 chip in the first gen. And on paper, this is supposed to yield an improvement in noise cancelling, battery life and transparency mode along with better connection stability. It's also worth mentioning that the new but old looking case also packs a U1 chip with improved location tracking services and works in conjunction with the speakers to make finding the AirPods Pro 2 even easier. All right, so what are the Gen 2s actually like to use? Now, historically, setting up any headphones in the AirPod lineup has been super easy on any Apple device, and this is no different. Simply open them up when using them for the first time and bring them near your Apple device, and it automatically detects and connects to said device and you're good to go. From there, you can see how much charge you have left in the headphones and the case itself and what devices you're currently connected to and a host of other features. Now these can also connect to any Bluetooth enabled device, which is good news for Android users as you simply have to hold this little button here for a few seconds and it should pop up on your Bluetooth menu. However, I do want to mention that there is a bit of a caveat here as this is not an entirely seamless process and you won't actually get the full functionality that you would when connecting to an Apple device. Now both the first and second gens fit really nice in the ear. I've been able to go out on runs and they've never fallen out. All right, so when it comes to sound, there is two sides to this. There is an improvement overall in sound quality with the Gen 2s over the Gen 1s, especially in the mid to low ranges. Now in saying that, if you're someone who listens to a lot of bass heavy music, then that is where you're actually gonna notice the most significant difference between the two. And it kind of makes sense when you think about it because bass was lacking in the Gen 1s. So it is nice to see the upgrade through the sound hardware and drivers have really paid off here. All right, so the second aspect of this is ANC, which is active noise cancellation, which is a feature that Apple really boasted about in their keynote. And I gotta say, to be completely honest, when it came to noise isolation at the higher frequencies, I really couldn't notice a difference between the Gen 1s and the 2s. But where I did see a noticeable improvement with the Gen 2s over the 1s was in the mid to low range frequencies. Now all this really means is that you'll get superior active noise cancellation for situations like the low drone of a car engine when you're in the cabin or when you're walking through a really busy shopping mall, it'll actually do a really good job at sort of blocking out all that background noise and chatter. Now I was at a Starbucks the other day leeching off their Wi-Fi, as you do, and I found that the active noise cancellation on the Gen 2s were far superior than on the Gen 1s. And it really did a great job at isolating and blocking out all that noise in that crowded space. And I gotta say, this is where you really start to see the leap the Gen 2s take over the 1s. All right, so in terms of gestures, 
Both the Gen 1s and the 2s feature one press to play and pause music as well as answer calls. Two presses will go to the next track and three presses will go to the previous track. Pressing and holding activates A and C as well as the adaptive and transparency modes. Saying Hey Siri allows for changing volume and playback controls as well as receiving messages. Now the Gen 2s also allow for swiping up and down for quick volume adjustments on the fly. Handy if you're not so keen on screaming out Hey Siri when you're out and about and scaring people's children. Now that brings me to my final comparison, which is the battery life. Very important for wireless headphones. Now I gotta say, with the Gen 1s, the headphones lasted for about four and a half hours on a single charge before I had to chuck them back in the case. Now this was when they were brand new. Now obviously we're aware that lithium batteries deteriorate over time, especially when they constantly keep getting charged when you chuck them back in the case. Now with the Gen 2s, I was able to consistently get about five and a half hours of playback with ANC on before they gave out and I had to chuck them back in the case. Now, this isn't a huge leap by any means, but it's decent enough when you consider just how tiny the lithium batteries that you get in these headphones are, and so you can definitely see the improved chip working its magic here. Plus, as an added bonus, you only need to chuck in the Gen 2 headphones back in the case for about 5 minutes and you can get up to about 45 minutes of ANC listening time, which honestly is pretty decent. Alright, so are the Gen 2s worth it over the Gen 1s? Well, the Gen 2s cost about 249 USD, which is the exact same price as the Gen 1s when they came out. Now, it is interesting and worth mentioning that you can get the Gen 1s brand new for about 50 USD cheaper than the Gen 2s depending on where you look. And I'll admit it, I am a fan of picking up older tech for cheap. However, in saying that, I believe that in this instance, if you've narrowed it down to these two wireless headphones, then I'd suggest paying extra and picking up the Gen 2s as they're just the better headphones overall and will serve you better for longer. Now, if you already have the Gen 1s and are thinking of upgrading, don't. Just wait for the Gen 3s to come out. They'll be much better. And honestly, I just don't think it's worth paying another 250 USD over a product that, while it is better, it's definitely not $250 better. All right, so this has been it for my comparison of the AirPods Pro Gen 1s versus the 2s. It looks like we're out of time. So I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.